All right, um, I'm having some of the same voice challenges that Mark's having, so I'll try to get through this as well. Um, I'm Jeff Carroll, the Director of Collection Development at Columbia University Libraries. Um, I'm throwing this up here. I'm not um, going to read through it, and I don't expect you to read through it right now because it's probably the same text that you saw when you decided to sign up to, to come here today. Um, but what I wanted to do is just highlight a few things in here, um, hurdles. I wanted to put, to, to remind us that um, these challenges or hurdles are being experienced by publishers, libraries, and researchers. So, so everybody involved in the process. Because I don't, um, as I go through that, this is going to be from the perspective of a library or an end user. Um, but I, I recognize that the challenges are there for the publishers as well. Um, and then uh, I like that Ross put in here real or imaginary, and that is referring to the hurdles, but I think as we'll go along, we'll have a little bit of fun of what that could be referring to as well. So um, many of you, if you're a New York City resident, probably know Columbia University and where it is and what it looks like. I understand there are some people from out of town and at least one person from out of country. Um, Columbia University is here in the city of New York, but it's uptown on the Upper West Side. I say the Upper West Side, not the Upper Upper West Side, because I used to live in Washington Heights. Um, so it's, it's up at 116th Street. The building that you're looking at here is the library of Columbia University. Just keep that in mind for a few minutes. It's not gold in color. That's the sun reflecting on it. What I'm hoping to do, and let me just take your mind away from that slide for a minute, I don't <laughs> want to scare you, um, is I'm going to show a little bit of where Columbia is at with its efforts in collecting ebooks, but then to contrast that with the efforts of our art library, our architecture and art library in collecting ebooks. Um, Columbia is made up of approximately 22 libraries. There are always some library coming and going, um, depending on what you count as a library as well. But our Avery Art and Architecture Library is one of them, a uh, very important library for us. And you'll see some differences in how we're collecting ebooks as a whole as an institution and how um, Avery is its efforts at collecting um, our ebooks. And then I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we're all facing in collecting ebooks. But Avery, in particular, I think, um, some, many of the challenges that Erica spoke about. Um, I, I also want to kind of show some of those challenges, um, but I really want to focus in on one or two because I think there may, I think there's some simple solutions to it, although it involves metadata, and if you're um, a librarian and have ever been involved in tech services, any changes to metadata is just unbelievably complex, no matter how simple the thing is you're trying to uh, achieve. So you saw that I had a graph or a, a chart there. I can't, I don't feel grounded unless I work a little bit with data and numbers, but I assure you there's only a few of them. Um, hopefully it'll make the point if I can get back to it. So this is showing the trend of Columbia University Libraries overall over the course of time. And you can see in 2004, this is Ebook records, basically it's ebooks that we have in our catalog. And in 2004, it was very low. And the first few years, it was um, very slow and taking off. But you can see that we're up to about 1.8 million ebooks in the collection now, which is extraordinary. Not all of these are purchased ebooks. Um, when you see the little bump up or a big bump up somewhere in 2010, um, I think that was probably when Hathi Trust ebooks came into our collection as well. Um, Every, all of those books are primarily open access books, um, but we're a partner in Hati Trust. Um, we were involved in the Google digitization project, so many of our books are in Hati Trust. Hati Trust is a big, what happened after that Google eBooks um, digitization project, um, many of the, the records are now in a open access trust. Uh, for access to everybody and hopefully for preservation over the long term. Um, there's been a lot of controversy about that. But we loaded all the big records to that into our collection. Somewhere when we were about 800,000, so a few years ago, the university librarian kept 
at me every few months. Are we at a million yet? Are we at a million yet? <laughs> so you can see about the point where we crossed a million. And then um, this is our trend in our total ebooks expenditures. It's now over $1.4 million, and I'm sure it's going to be higher than that this year, which is pretty, I mean, that's very significant, I think. And as a percentage of all of our books expenditures, um, it's almost 25%, and I didn't realize that until I was putting this together. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, we've got our feet in the water, but only our feet. We're actually knee-deep in it now, so it's going to be hard to get back out. Contrast that, though, with um, our Avery Library's efforts. And um, in 2011, that $20,000 for eBooks is still a significant figure, I think. That's not a small amount of money. But in contrast to what the overall university is spending on e-books, it is small. And you can see that that was an anomaly there. Um, if you look at the trend line, it, there's really a line kind of going right through the middle of that one to FY12. And that's where we're going to talk about um, some possibilities of why, uh, what are the challenges that Avery is facing that the rest of the institution may not be facing or isn't quite as concerned about. And also looking at Avery um, as a percentage of its overall books budget is very small, minuscule. 0.2% of its overall budget is going, books budget, that is, is going to purchase ebooks. Um, so if we look at that in the context of the overall university <laughs> looking at this, we'll get through this very quickly, it almost doesn't even show up. Um, both um, I expenditures in general and percent of expenditures. Done with that part of it. So now, I just um, just some ideas, and we can all think about these ideas, these benefits of e-books. I think they're obvious for the most part. Um, enhanced discoverability. You can search full text or whatever it is uh, much more easily than you can search full text of a print book, right? Um, enhanced searching. You can search throughout it. You can search across titles. Enhanced functionality for existing print copies. And what I mean by that, um, Avery, a big portion of Avery's collection doesn't circulate um, according to restrictions from the endowment and other things. Um, but ebooks, if we have ebook copies of those print things, then somebody can access that no matter where they are as long as they're an affiliate of the university. Portability, of course. You have the whole collection of ebooks, um, in our case, 1.8 million potentially on your uh, tablet or your iPhone even. Uh, multiple users, if we're allowed multiple users, um, that's a benefit. Potential for interlinking of references and images. So you get the references at the back of the book, just click on it and you go to where that reference was. We're not really there yet, I think. There's a few experiments in that area. But to me, that, that is one of the benefits we can look forward to um, with eBooks. And this is just another way of stating the same thing. You don't have to go to the shelf and look up the reference. It's hopefully a click away. And then ease of copying, pasting text. You don't have to type it in or transcribe it or handwrite it, et cetera. You can come up with your own. So the challenges, you can also, I'm sure, come up with many that I don't list here. Um, but one of the most important things I think for us to remember is that in most cases for ebooks and other digital content, we're purchasing a license to access the content. We're no longer purchasing the content itself. That has real implications for preservation. Um, and so a library like the Metz Library and Columbia's libraries, preservation is a real big deal. We see ourselves as custodians of this information. If we don't own the content, we don't have a real hand in preserving that content. So that's an issue. I think that there are no good solutions to that yet. Um, there are some attempts at it, but it's not there, and we need to keep pushing for that. Lack of platform standardization. Um, Erica mentioned that they've chosen eBrary as their platform, and with 1.8 million eBooks, that doesn't work for us because we have many, a plethora of platforms, and this creates a real problem because our users they don't care that we got it from some other, you know, we're dealing with different vendors and different publishers. Every time they go into something, they have to learn a different way of using it, and that's problematic. 
DRM, digital rights management. Uh, there's a lack of standardization in that. Um, one platform will allow printing of only so many pages. Another platform will allow a different number of pages. The user doesn't care that these different restrictions are put on there that way. Um, they don't understand it, it's very frustrating. We'll actually see some anecdotal evidence of the frustration in a few minutes. <laughs> Not from me, from a quote <laughs> on <there. laughs> um, Print version um, is often available before the e-version. And I, I, I know I've, it's been explained to me a few times why this would be, but it still seems crazy. Um, uh, and I think we can do something about that, really. Uh, somewhere in the future, we can do something about that. But that's an issue right now. Um, we, we do have some orders for ebooks, um, and that when the print is available, and we're expecting to get it as an ebook, but the print's available six weeks ahead of the ebook, that's very frustrating. And it's very frustrating for our faculty our users, and there's a lot of pressure put on us for that when we've made the decision to go E only in a certain area. Quality of digital images, and I think uh, we talked about that a little bit already. Failure, this is the big point I want to make, failure to clear rights for digital versions of images. Um, and I use failure as very strong language, and I want to really bring that up. And I, I think the point that we're going to make is we don't, we're not trying to demand that these rights are cleared before the thing is published. We just want to know that the rights weren't cleared before we buy the book. Um, so here's some of this anecdotal evidence I was got, talking about. Here's um, what Avery has done is started to collect some of the complaints that they've got around ebooks. Um, and I think this is going to be very useful. I'd like to do this library wide. Uh, it's going to take quite an effort to do it, but we'll see. So this quote, how are we supposed to use these fancy new ebooks if we can't even print a chapter or two at a time? This is so infuriating that I'm almost ready to write to, you can fill in the blank there. Um, that's, it's our university library. Right? <laughs> um, and he may have done it since then. <laughs> After jumping through all kinds of hoops, creating an account and downloading software, I was actually able to print the chapter. It is ridiculous that one has to do all these different things in order to get a halfway decent results. And, th and that's on one platform. We'd probably have to go download software and everything on, on some other platform as well. Um, and then finally, I think that this, this is the last one, but if I had my way, I would ask libraries to continue to acquire books rather than sign on to all kinds of half-baked technology <laughs> ventures that lure readers with better accessibility, but it in, the, in the end hook you to systems that are forcing you to do all kinds of time-consuming things. So, um, you know, the benefit was that you could get access very quickly and use it very easily, but you we're seeing the opposite here. So, big frustration. And keep in mind about this, I would ask libraries to continue to acquire books. I think that goes to Mark's love of the printed book as well. Um, it's going to show up very um, strongly at the end of this presentation. So I want to remind you of some of those challenges we talked about. And the, the real things I want to focus in on is, again, we're licensing access to content. We're not, in most cases, buying the content. It's a really big issue, particularly for preservation. And then the failure to clear rights for digital versions of images. So here's eBrary, our friend. And it, this is not eBrary's fault, um, I have to say. Um, this is a book that Avery bought. It's an ebook. This is the uh, table of contents of that book. And this is not something that went wrong with my PowerPoint. It's <laughs> page 41 of the book. Um, and we didn't know this until after we bought it, and it probably had it for a while, and somebody was looking and then complained that, hey, where's the image? And this is, it's not the only image that's missing in this book either. And it didn't, um, once I was, when I was trying to, I was working with one of my colleagues in Avery to try to find this, and it didn't take us very long. Um, I think it was just a couple of clicks and we were into this page. So that's a big issue. Um, this is the record from Gobi, which is YBP's our main book vendor, and we buy many of our ebooks through um, YBP. There's no indication in this record that. Um, the publisher was unable to clear 
rights for the image or any images in a book. Likewise, um, this is just simply uh, the bibliographic record in our catalog. There's no indication there that the, the images are mission, missing. That's a, really all we're asking is that we know up front that the images are mission, missing. We still may decide to buy the book, the ebook, but we'd like to know that the images are missing. And we're buying, as you saw, even Avery buying $20,000 a year at, at its best year of ebooks. There's too many ebooks to go through and try to preview them to see which ones are missing the images. Um, and in many cases, the preview doesn't allow you to see the whole book. So you would still be missing, you know, um, that. So all we're asking is, is a notification. And that could be done with metadata or whatever it is. I think it has to come from the publisher. We went back to YVP in this case. And of course, um, they're dealing with, it's the same thing for them. They don't know the image is missing. Uh, Gobi or uh, Ebrary doesn't know the image is missing, so it's re really rests with the publisher to to make it known that these things are missing, and I think I think that can be solved. Um, again, this is the the entire mark record of that thing. There's no indication anywhere that the images are missing. All right, maybe I've belabored that long enough. Um, so this is where I'm hoping to have a little bit of fun and go back to some of the things that I had said earlier. Again, the Library of Columbia University. When you come on the campus, this is the big building up high on the, uh, on the campus. It overlooks everything, and that's what it says. Um, this is what it looks like, standing back away from it a little bit. This is what it looked like shortly after completion in the late 19th century, around 1897 or so. And you can see that there are books, there are places to read those books and whatnot. Um, but sometime within a few decades, it outgrew itself, or the collection outgrew the library, and so they moved all of the books out of the library. <coughs> this is uh, another picture of that process happening, and those books were being trolleyed or on this ramp all the way across the quad, across campus to the new library, which is Butler Library, built around 1937. It didn't take long to outgrow the Library of Columbia University. Um, and so now, I was trying to find a similar inside view of low library or the Columbia University Library. There are no books there. There's lots of people that's used as a lecture space and whatnot, but there are no books in the Library of Columbia University. So with um, those missing images in our e-books, the question I'm asking then if we, w Columbia, our book collecting is now 25% of our overall books budget is going to ebooks. Will the Library of Columbia University become real <laughs> or imagined? So I, I, I wrap it up with that, and I think we're going to have a panel up here shortly. Thank you.